colleagues are doing. And then the second question is on uh, the comments by the French president after he visited China. How wide would you say the gulf is between the U.S. and the European approach to Beijing? So I think we're going to take all of the non-trip questions with Kirby and Corrine later today and just focus here for now on, on the trip. Uh, with Josh Bloomberg. Yeah, thank you. Can you discuss whether the president will have a response to Prime Minister Sunak's calls to launch some measure of free trade negotiations, not a full FTA, but he wants to move the ball forward here somehow? What will the president tell him? So I don't anticipate that the two leaders are going to be talking about a free trade agreement on, on this trip. Uh, I think when they meet later this morning, the purpose of their conversation is going to focus primarily on the situation in, in Northern Ireland, uh, given that that's where they're meeting, uh, as well as a chance to, to touch base on, on Ukraine and some other issues. Uh, when the two leaders met in San Diego, they did have an opportunity to touch briefly on economic issues. And part of the reason that the president invited Prime Minister Sunak to uh, have a meeting with him in, in Washington in June uh, is to continue furthering and, and deepening that conversation. So we're continually looking for ways to uh, engage with, with the UK on the full range of, of economic issues, as we had read out of their conversation in, in San Diego, um, but are not currently discussing a free trade agreement with them. Sectoral specific trade arrangements that the US would be interested in, sort of bite-sized efforts that the PM has been advocating for? I think those are, are all the source of, of ongoing negotiations, and I expect the two leaders will have the opportunity to talk in more detail uh, about economic issues when they have the opportunity for a longer conversation in, in June. And, and very briefly, given he's meeting the political party leaders, does the U.S. have a position on whether the uh, Good Friday Agreement should be revised to allow for non-sectarian parties to join any power-sharing agreement? Right now, that's not the case. Does he have a position or does the US, U.S. have a position one way or another, whether that should be? I know or that's or the, the subject of a lot of ongoing discussion here right now. That's, that, is, that is ultimately going to be a decision for the people of Northern Ireland to make in terms of, of how they structure their, their governance. Are you pressuring them to uh, break the logjam at Stormont right now, or is that not the purpose of the greetings today? I, the, the purpose of the, the President's visit today is, is to mark the, the Good Friday Agreement, to continue to reaffirm the support of the United States for peace and prosperity, to underscore the readiness of the United States to engage in further economic investment here. Uh, obviously, the President, like I think everybody in Northern Ireland, the Prime Minister, the Taoiseach and the rest, would like to see the devolved institutions back up and running. Uh, the President made that point in his remarks on, on St. Patrick's Day, um, but, but really the main purpose of his visit here today is to to mark the anniversary. Thank you. Okay, we're back to NPR. Um, thanks, Amanda. Appreciate it. Um, in terms of talking to the DUP today, what is the president's strategy to encourage them to reopen Stormont, given it's widely seen here that they're holding it up because they don't want Sinn Féin to have the first minister and sort of break this huge tradition? Um, just curious to know what leverage he might have in his conversations with the DUP. I think, like I said, in, in response to the, the previous question, I think the, the, the main message of the, the president to, to all parties, to, to all people of Northern Ireland, is to reaffirm support for the Good Friday uh, Agreement. Uh, and obviously, Pillar 1 and the devolved institutions here in Northern Ireland are a, a fundamental part, strand one, of, of the Good Friday Agreement. And so I think the president's message, as he said in St. Patrick's Day, as I expect he will reaffirm today, is the United States' strong support for that, the belief that the people of Northern Ireland uh, deserve to have democratically elected power sharing representative governance. Uh, so I think the, the President comes here very much as a friend, as a supporter of Northern Ireland, as a supporter of peace in Northern Ireland, uh, to convey the message of, of support from the United States for those institutions and, and for the, the process here.